What up, 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 what the fuck is up? The real is back. Your boy Uncasa. Uncasa True Hip Hop Stories. Fresh off a year hiatus. What the fuck is up? Shout out to all my motherfucking pies and pies S. Pies is back for sale. Fresh off a hiatus. Fresh with a new season. Episode 34, the tribute of K-Slay. What's up, y'all? Did you miss me? I know I missed y'all. Shout out to everybody. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I am back. I am back. Thank you to all the the followers, all the fans of Unconstant True Hip Hop Stories that I see in the streets. What do I see in different states? They was like, can you please bring back the Unconstant True Hip Hop Stories? I was kind of um, going through a few things in life, and I really, really didn't have time or was inspired to give y'all these classic stories like I was giving them to y'all. So I went on hiatus to take care of my daughter, to take care of my business endeavors. But everything is back in order. I got my mind right, my money right, and I'm ready for motherfucking internet war positively. Pies is back. Positive internet energy. You want pies? I got them for sale. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Thank y'all for still supporting me. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I just had to get my life in order to bring y'all this. Like, I was really not inspired to give y'all no stories. I wasn't. I was losing a lot of people in my life. A lot of people around me was losing people in their life. My best friend lost his mom's. Shout out to the Black Share family. God bless Mama Rachel. Um, God bless the Wisdom family. Ali Wisdom, one of the founding members of my first rap group I ever was in, the Endangered Species. Um, rest in peace to my man EJ. Um, yo, over the, from the pandemic to now I lost a lot of people and I really wasn't in a creative space to do anything on YouTube I really wasn't in the space at all so I took off a year and the year that I took off a lot of people was hitting me up and was like yo can you bring back them stories and then unfortunately I lost my last Instagram page that I am unconstipated somebody hacked me and took my page so I was really kind of discouraged. I didn't want to come back to social media. I didn't want to come back to the internet. So y'all really brought me back to bring y'all these classic stories. I got a whole lot more stories for y'all. I don't think I ran out of stories. I, my life been too ill to run out of any fucking stories. And I got some new ones to tell y'all. And I got a new endeavor that's going to be on my page because all my fans been telling me to be more interactive with my YouTube fans and viewers, so I'm gonna start doing this segment called Industry in, in, Industry Insight with Uncasa, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more different. Current events, what's going on in the music business, what's going on in fashion, what's going on currently, everything. It's gonna won't be more in depth, more personal, up close and personal with me, as far as a person. So look out for um. Industry insight, and um, that's gonna be dope too. But thank you if you're watching this now. Thank you, the return of the real, untouchable storyteller. I'm the slick Rick of fucking storytelling of YouTube. I'm the slick Rick of this shit. I've seen a lot of people try to come in my space. And shout out to the ones that's out here telling their story. Especially, I want to give a big shout out to my man, Jay Hood. Tell us my hood is dope. Go follow and subscribe to his page. I'm not a hater. Um, I'm a congratulator. Shout out. He he, the, he 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 was able to fill that void while I was on my hiatus. And he got real dope stories. And he got similar to life like me. So shout out to Jay Hood. But Jay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. The real is back. Untouchable, unconscious, true hip hop stories is back. Episode 34, the tribute to K Slay. This is the time y'all supposed to be rolling up if y'all niggas ain't rolling up. Y'all know the routine. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing because I stepped away for a little fucking minute with y'all niggas' thoughts. Y'all got fat while starved. I'm fucking back. I'm not playing with you niggas. Like I said, fucking roll up, get you a fucking drink. You know what I'm saying? Um. Last time I dropped something, weed wasn't legal. Weed legal like a motherfucker now. So now that it's legal, I got my own strand. Shout out to Sunny Packs. That's that was that was my sponsor for all the 
30 something episodes that I gave y'all previously. He was hitting me with all the illustrations. Shout out to Sunny Packs. He has a new um store called, called Sunny Packs, exotic snacks out in Queens. Follow him on Instagram at Sunny Packs. He got the strands. He got the snacks. That's my brother. He he just had a baby girl. Congratulations to him on that. Um, I got my own strand, Vanilla Sky. You know what I'm saying? And this is actually um one of the packaging, but this is the actually cover from the Vanilla Sky Three mixtape that you still can go stream or you can buy directly from me. If you buy it directly from me through Cash App, which is Zori Bear X O R I B E A R Zori Bear. That's my daughter's pet name, Zori Bear X O R I B E A R. You can buy it through me for twenty dollars through my Cash App. Cause it come with all type of covers and pictures and stuff like that and all type of information about the next tape and, and upcoming documentaries, or you can go to the streaming sites because it's on all the streaming sites too. So you can go even put the money directly in my pocket or you can go through these streaming sites, whatever you pick. You know, I'm not tripping about nothing. But like I said, Vanilla Sky 3, Vanilla Sky Gelato, Vanilla Lotto, Vanilla Sky Lotto, was, you know, you can get this. Shout out to boy Sunny Packs. He always keep me right, but now I got my own strand. I keep, I, I, it's, and if you like weed, it's the, the illest tasting gelato you ever want to taste in your life. Shout out to my boys over there. They dropped me some things earlier. Shout out to my boy Fo over at No Pressure. He got the gushers. He got the Mick Pressure. He got the, the slushies. He got a couple of flavors. Shout out to my boy out the way. Fo, follow him on. And No Pressure, follow his brand. Shout out to Gumbo. Shout out to Special Delivery. Shout out to, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm family to a lot of weed brands. Shout out to Run Strokes Up. Shout out to everybody that got their cannabis brands going on. Shout out to my man Kush Kells. He got his own orange soda. I'm promoting all my brother's brands like it's mine. Shout out to Sunny Pack. Like I said, Ex Shiny Plex Exotic Snacks. Uh, shout out to the Faite boys, me, Skibo, and my boy, um, Sleaze, Jay Hizzy. We got the Faite strands and all that, so, you know, you hit me. And like I said, they took my last Instagram page, so you can come follow me on my new Instagram page. They took 40,000 followers from me. I'm trying to get back. Um, follow me at the real uncasa the underscore real underscore uncasa follow me let's get back the followers to forty thousand. let's give me even more i believe and if you fuck with me at one time you will fuck with me again i'm not tripping about the ones that's not following me or they probably didn't know where i was at but like i said they hacked my last page and i'm back to set the record straight and, and put this storytelling shit back in perspective um like i said follow me at the real uncasa the underscore real underscore Uncasa on Instagram. And um you I'm still doing the mulch the merch. Follow Cranberry and Vodka. Cranberry with a K. Cranberry and Vodka merch. I got all the illest merch that you ever want to see in your life. Um like I said, industry insight coming real soon. I'm gonna be more in depth with y'all niggas, you know what I'm saying? And um and um it's about to be ill. Like I said, this uh this uh, episode is dedicated to K-Sway. So if you ain't rolling up, you better start rolling up because the real is back. I'm already rolled up. You already know. Like I said, I'm smoking out another sky tonight. Um, this nigga, I've been away for a year. You still ain't get a fucking light, my nigga. Come on, bro. It's been a year. You still ain't got a light here. You can have my lime green light here. You know what I'm saying? Because you bugging the fuck out. You tripping. You tripping all the way up bigger on a whole fucking year and you still ain't get no motherfucking light. This shit is ridiculous, my nigga. Some niggas just can't get right. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my dude Corner Dawn over at uh Rich Smokers, you know what I'm saying? He he killing on the on the hats right now. He killing him, he killing him, he's killing him. Shout out to my man Quan the Dawn. Follow Rich Smokers on Instagram. Like I said, I'm gonna turn to the back so I can see what the fuck I'm talking about. But like I said, this episode is dedicated to the late great K Slay. I would like to give a moment of silence to K Slay and all the following people that I mentioned earlier. Rest in peace, Slay. You will be missed. Mama Rachel. Ali, EJ, a whole gang of people passed away. I have so many names to name, I'm not going to even get into it right now, but we all going to get into this uh, 
off hiatus episode, episode 34 of Unconstitutional Hip Hop Stories, and this is how I met K Slate. Um, roll up, light up, drink, let's get it. Thank you. I'm, I'm back. Like I said, well, around 96 and like 96, 97. Through another, through my brother, Puzo, shout out to Puzo, my highest brother. I met my homeboy, Key. He's my brother now. So, this is a funny story how I met Key, too. Because when I met, when I met Key, me and Key ain't really get off the, when I met him, we ain't really get off on a good start, on a good foot. Due to the fact that my 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 best friend brought me to his crib unannounced, so I kind of understood where he came from. So I didn't trip about that. But as time went on, I kept seeing him in the streets bumping, and was like, you know, we got cooler and cooler. And as as we, you know, you know, we got cool. I, I see he was a cool nigga. He was a hustler. He was getting to his his bag. You know, he, he was, he, you know, whatever he was doing. The nigga had gold fronts, top and bottom big chain on his neck. It was cold at the time. He had the big beige Onyx Tims, you know, the Tims that Onyx used to wear with the snorkel. You know, he was fly. You know what I'm saying? He was fly. Little nice skin kid. Uh, uh, little lazy eye. Short nigga, probably four nine. But he ain't even five foot. My man, Hustle Man. Shout out to Hustle Man. Go follow him on Keys to the City Podcast on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I'm shouting out everybody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't a hater. So, like I said, when I first met him, my man, my man Puzo took me to his crib. He was like, yo, who this nigga? You know, he kind of looked at me, and I looked at him, I'm like, yo, what the fuck, you know what I mean? He said, yo, we just came this morning. He was like, nah, ain't bring nobody to my crib with my daughter ass, such and such. Like I said, I didn't take it personal. I respected that. As time went on, we got cool. And um, we had a weed spot on my block that we used to go to, Mangy and, and Andy's. And they used to sell the limousine bags nicks of hawaiian skunk fire is nicks you gonna get and you can make two to three blunts the fucking weed used to be busting out the bag and they dimes look like 50s of this hawaiian skunk on the corner of 151st and broadway right next to the smoke shop shout out to mike and my my my, my yim and my akis from over there so uh After a while, they got raided, and when they got raided, they started hustling on the block, and, you know, at that time, you know, we was young and ignorant, we was like, yo, we fuck with them, we buy weed from these niggas, but these niggas can't come between the block, they ain't got no real estate on the block, they real estate is, you know, raided or whatnot, so we came up with some idea, like, who gonna step to these niggas and tell these niggas, yo, they even, you know, put his in with them on getting some money, because them niggas had a flow a fucking clientele that was out of this fucking world. I've never seen a fucking clientele like this. I sell these niggas had to be selling at least a thousand nickels a day. No lie, no exaggeration, no fronting. If I'm lying, I am flying. I am telling you the truth. These niggas had customers that was coming from New Jersey buying 250 bags. I'm telling you, these niggas was getting money. And you know how I know because I want them getting money with them. So, you know, we gave them a little automatum. You know, they figure out, you know, you can't beat them, join them type shit. And, you know, it wasn't no beef. It was just out of respect. So, we laid the, you know, we laid the game down flat. We wound up dealing with these niggas and getting money with them. So, my man Key had this remedy that he learned from the Jamaicans, how to make the chocolate with the Guinness Stout and the, and the, and the Tiger Bone and shit. So, we start going to buy the, 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 uh, the green $60, $70, $50 ounce weed. From from Bradhurst and Saint Nick from the Jamaicans, and we get all the concoction, mix it up, spread it down in a in a cardboard box, then put it in a, a pan and put it in the oven for about five minutes. Let that shit get dark, brown and sticky, and bag it up. And then niggas was booming with it, cause we 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 kind of had the same remedy that you know we kind of we ain't have it down all the way, but after a while we perfected it. We we had that chocolate like. 
how Ellie, if y'all weed smokers from back in the day, I've been smoking almost 30 years, so it was a weed spot called Ellie, and they used to have lines around the corner in the Bronx, and um, they used to sell this sticky chocolate. Niggas was saying it was all types of shit, or whatever. We as young, we was smoking that shit, but it was definitely chocolate weed. So, uh, it was the summer of 98. I never forget it. Buster, put your hands with your eyes, can see what's out, all that shit. Getting a bunch of money on, a bunch of money on 51st on the block, Play Street every day. We cooking out, we getting fresh, you know, we running it up. My man Key was also getting money out of town with his cousin moving, you know, that Aguilera back then. This is 20-something, 23 years ago. And, um, he was getting money and shit, so he would, you know, come spray the weed down, put the weed bag the weed up, count the money up, count whatever profit we got in here, go back out of town. So me and my man Puzo, we was holding down. It was only a few of us out on the block at the time. Me, my nigga Puzo, uh, my man Teddy, my man D-Lo. The Jamaicans, Tophany, it was like the whole block. We was just getting money down on the Broadway side. We was getting money on the Broadway side, all of us, everybody. Key came out of town one time. He was like, I seen a whip out of town. Give, give, give me some money so I can get the whip. Came back out of town with the whip, the Monster 323, silver shit with the five-star rims, with the system, the stash box in it. We had that shit lit. Back then, young niggas, I'm about 17, 18 back then, some shit like that. And um, we kind of lit on the block, Key coming in and out of town. Like I said, Key was like, when I first met Key, Key was selling 100 movies a day, like VCR tapes, walking from 151st and Broadway to 137th, then you turn on the uptown side and do the same thing. Every day I sell 100 c CDs. He was getting money. I mean, 100 VCR tapes, VHS tapes every day. He would go to the Africans, re-up at the storage, or go to Canal and go cop mad VCR tapes. And I was like, yo, this shit is on some underground shit, bro. Like, how they got it set up in the storage houses and all that shit. That shit was ill. So, long story short, um, Key, he just showed me a different life. So, it was after a while, Key was going out of town. We got the car. The block started getting a little crazy because niggas started cutting through. There was enough money out there, but niggas just start selling bad weed and, and running off and doing a whole bunch of shit. So, we kind of got fell back from the block we made feel like we made enough money to hold us through the winter into the summer and to the next year so we left 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 that shit key was like yo what you gonna do mo because he, he from the bronx he like yo mo what you gonna do he got the gold fronts in the mo he was like yo we gotta get money you know i still got my flow with the cds i'm like i mean with the vcr tapes i'm like i'm not selling no fucking vcrs VHS tapes. He like, yo, Mo, it's the same thing as drugs, Mo. It's just different products. Same muscle, different product, Mo. We got to do this. Like, you can't you can't just be one track mind and you, you can sell drugs, but you, you can't sell. If you can sell drugs, you can sell anything. So I'm like, I right, bet. So we used to park the car up and do his route from 151st and Broadway to 137 every day, every day. We doing that, we doing that, we doing that, we doing that. Then we got kind of tired of doing that shit. We was like, yo, this shit's getting redundant, you know what I'm saying? So it was this guy named Addy, this little young kid, Spanish guy, <clears throat> that had a barbershop. He had his barbershop set up like a basketball court. And then he moved across the street, got a bigger joint. And then he had like this space, like it was like a, like a little like a little area with a door, like it was like a little room. And he was telling us he was gonna rent it out. He was kind of skeptical about us cause he knew that we was young and we was around all the route crowd, but he, he loved us. So he rented us out the spot. We put posters all over the shit. You know what I'm saying? It made it look like a real music hut because it wasn't no type of shit like that on the hill we was from. You had to go to Hunt 25th or the music hut to go get your CDs and shit like that back then. So we set it up. 
Key would go out, do his hustle, how he was doing. I would stand in shop. We would get a few customers here and there, but it wasn't enough to, you know, it was just enough to pay the, the, the booth area, and that was it. So, you know, we gave up the shop, start hitting the block again. And um, by this time, this is when CDs starting to pop. CDs, he was like, yo, Mo, my nigga Key was like, yo, Mo, we're going to start selling the CDs on in, in, the, in the VCR tapes, we're going to start getting on this. But we got to find a spot to post up at. So I'm like, what you what you thinking? He was like, yo, we're going to go to Hump 45th. You know, all the sneaker stores, all the drug dealers, everything. Niggas be coming to Boston. They're going to buy music. Who don't niggas driving in and out of town? Who don't want music? I'm like, yo, you right. Went over there, set up. Brung a couple of our niggas, J-Bug, Kenny Black, a few other guys at the time. We was just out there. You know, making a name for ourselves. You couldn't come to Hump 45th in the late 90s, early 2000s and not get harassed by the Taliban or buy something. So, Key was like, yo, this music, the, 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 the CDs, the CDs and the, and the movies is doing all right, but we need something else out here, Mo. I got an idea. I ran across something. When I, when I get it, you'll know. So, a couple of days went past and Key went downtown and got some connector, some nigga that was making iceberg sweaters. I mean, these shits was looking so authentic. You couldn't tell if they was, you know, replicas. So he came back. I'm like, yo, where the fuck we get these at? He's like, yeah, we about to get, we about to get a million off this shit. So long story short, we, at the time, Key had to, we, we, we got rid of, I think we had an accident in the, in the, in the car. Key had an accident in the, in the Monster 323. He wound up getting a CRX red joint with the flip up lights and all that. And we were selling, used to use that as the little shop. So I wound up, one day I came, he had the sweaters and all that, he bumping them shits off. So we out there about like 8.30, 7.30, 8.30. Guys, they came out the store with mad sneaker bags. They looked like they were spending money. So we ran down on the niggas like, yo, Yo, we got icebergs, so they was like, yo, that shit real. So it's like, yeah, look, nigga, they so niggas was like, yo, dude, I got on shit, like, yo, this shit official. So he got on icebergs. I was like, look, we ain't playing no games how much. So my man Key walked over to the car with them niggas and hopped in like the minivan with them niggas, but he hopped right out. But when he hopped down, he had no sweaters. He came back to the car. He's like, yo, bro, they just booked me. Them niggas just pulled out the grip and said, get out the car and all that. So I'm like, word. Long story short, we start chasing these niggas in the car. We chase these niggas down to almost mid about. The by across the Brooklyn Bridge and just turn back. It's like, yo, if them niggas got a, 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 a fucking gun, they're going to wind up killing us for them sweaters, mo. Thinking them shits is real and thinking we got some. So we turned back. Key was like, yo, fuck that, mo. Watch what I do tomorrow. That nigga woke up early in the morning and went down there and bought like 50, 60 sweaters. And so all them shits, that same thing, probably made like 20 bands, sell them all them shits for 500 a piece. He was killing them. So now... Me and Key used to just ride around, smoke weed all day up and down the West Side Highway listening to mixtapes. And he used to always play this DJ. And I used to be like, yo, this nigga stay with the fire major figures. Who this shit? This nigga killing Clue right now. He's like, yo, K Slay the Drama King. So I'm like, world, this nigga's ill. So he was like, yeah. You can only buy CDs from him, too, bro. He ain't playing with the bootleggers, neither. That nigga running around slapping the shit out of niggas. I'm going to buy some mixtapes from him right now, mo. So I'm like, I right, bet. So he's like, I got the nigga number. I told him to meet us at the music hut. So I got his tape, his, his number off the tapes so about wholesaling shit. So we're going to meet him at the music hut. So we went to the Isaac Music Hut. We meet him. He did a drop for us and all that. It's like he out on a big crown chain and all that, with the with the with the with the with, with the with, with with the uh the Gucci shit on and all that. You know how K Slate did it with the Dapper Dan shit, with the shades and all that. He did the drop first. He had said our name wrong or whatever, but then after that he straightened up. He did it. We 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 did it good enough to where we can edit it and it sound good. And he was the hottest nigga at the time, so we was just let off that because we used to run around with this recorder. And used to get drops from niggas. Every rapper we see, we run down, we like, let's do a drop for our uh, tape or whatever. Because we was running around dropping tapes and shit too. So that's how I met K Slate. 
then it got to a point where we got so cool with him. He used to have his crib on the east side, like on first, I think one of something and first. And he used to throw the key down to you to get in the crib and used to walk up and he used to have his equipment in, in the room with his shit, all his clothes hanging up and the speakers and shit like that. He used to go copy, he used to do bootleg and shit too. And we, we built a rapport with Sway because, you know, he was the hottest nigga out at the time. He was underground. He was dropping a tape like every fucking week, double CDs, all the, all the beef tapes, all the new dip set, all that shit. And it was just like, yo, damn. Slay was doing shit, like, not even really charging him. He was just fucking with you. He fucked with you. He fucked with you. And he was arrogant and cocky. But Slay didn't give a fuck. He was real. He would tell you the real shit. And that's the beginning of uh, meeting K. Slay. So as time went on, the dipshit shit popped off. Cam signed with Rockefeller. You know, everybody started. This is when we linked up. He had bring Luca brought bring Luca to the to the table, you know Luca put forty fifth in a, a perspective after we got robbed like because Key was like we gotta recruit we gotta you know we gotta ramp put some some enforcement around us we so niggas can't be running down on us you see how much money we make with these sweaters niggas find out we making this money with the sweaters they gonna try to run down on us so it was like right so you know. Luke started bringing the Blacker Dons and all the other type of guys around us. So, you know, niggas wouldn't think about, you know, booking us and shit like that. So, we used to have, it used to be the studio on 145th in Amsterdam. Me and Key used to book out and do our tapes. Around this time, Diplomats did the first Diplomat tape. He hosted it. Then we did a tape, Purple City versus Taliban. With Luch and Shice on the cover and throwback jerseys, and you know, Slate coasted that for little to nothing. And you know, that's when the, that's how the Purple City dipset ever started on the mixtape. Ever Slate was, you know, you know, co signing niggas. He used to always tell me, Yo, yo, Casa B, in your word, B, you the you, you one of the you one of the top three niggas of the dipset. Word, fuck that. I said it. Drama King, K Slate slapped your favorite DJ. I said that shit. Give a fuck. Who get mad? And I was just like, yo, that's respect. So ever since they like this footage, this viral footage of me and Slay in the sneaker store, I think we in BJ's and I'm robbing he right behind me, co signing. You know what I'm saying? That's classic footage. You know, Slay gave all the niggas like me, Fred the Guard. Oh, Frenchie, Hell Rail, everybody a chance to get on his tapes, you know what I'm saying? Because anything, any nigga that was hot at that time, nigga was killing shit, you know what I'm saying? Slay was real underground, Slay was getting money, you know what I'm saying? Slay was really underground getting money on his mixtape shit, you know what I'm saying? And then around the time when, you know, niggas started getting the Rico for mixtapes, he ventured off and got legal with the straight starting shit, you know what I'm saying? So Slay, and Slay was... Um, Desi Dez from from graffiti and all that from the wild style days. So you know, Slay been out here putting out the work for the culture. Nobody did shit like Slay out here. Nobody did shit like Slay or how he did it. Like DJs used to be fronting on niggas. Niggas wasn't putting you on the tape, and Slay wouldn't. So you would be an unknown artist. Slay would put you in the first t night, ten, nine slots. He wouldn't put you at 25 or nothing. He'll put you up there like you can or Beanie Siegel or Major Figures was hot at the time. He put you right in a rotation of that. So he put you in the rotation of that. Niggas like me and Bathgate and niggas like that. That shit gave us that extra, oh, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, niggas got a lot of people got to think that K. Slay, like K. Slay wasn't no sucker. He, 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 he spoke his mind and, and, and he had his, his, his thumb on the pulse of hip hop way before I was even born, you know what I'm saying? So you got to salute a nigga like Slate because he was doing shit and, and giving you that feel. Like I remember how I used to cop them tapes. We cop them tapes and I come home and put Slay in and he got all that new shit on there and it's just a vibe. I used to sit on my mom's white carpet and we had this like 30 CD, 50 CD changer, some shit like that. You used to have like 50 CDs in it and you can change it in a, a, 
15, 20 slots out of the 50 CD changes, K slaves, Street Sweeper 1, Street Sweeper 2, Street Sweeper 3, Street Sweeper L Pro Double uh, Interview, this, down and third. Like, he set the stand. Like, he, like, his shit used to be like events. Like, when Slay drop, yo. Like, I can't front. Like, Slay drop, it be events, it waves, smoke to it. Like, early in the morning. Like, Slay used to do all on beat tape. Like, Slay did everything, bro. Slay out the wave, yo. So, I was working with this artist. I was doing create, you know, creative force behind behind this artist and she, the artist caught Slay Eye and um they started working together and um me and Slay fell out before he died. Like when I, I seen him, we never had no bad blood, no words, no nothing. He just stopped speaking to me. And I kinda figured it was about the artist that we was working with because the I all I know is I called Slick I went to the session with the artist we was I was working with. I was working with this artist for over a decade, writing, being creative force, directing videos, all type of stuff. And um she was get, she was getting hot on the internet and you know Slade got like I say he got his his thumb on the poster or anything that's hot and especially come out of Harlem and you know you know he you know he started you know, taking her in and doing what Slade do, like, you know, Slade do for all artists, and you know. So, he, when he was at the session, you know, he was telling the artist, like, yo, I've been fucking with us since he's a little nigga running around since the mixtape days and all that shit. And, you know, everything was good and dandy. It wasn't, you know, it was, we was drinking champagne. I was, he let me smoke in this session. All that, it was cool. Word. I was, it, nobody wasn't tripping we is all good i called him one day and was laying out ideas and stuff and it, it was just like he gave me the vibe like why why you calling me like so i was like after that I never called him again i felt some type of way but then in this business you can't feel no type of way and just because it wasn't i've been had nothing but a good rapport for with slave for well over a decade so you know I kind of said, yo, you know, I let time heal wounds and time. I just stepped to him like, big homie, if I did something wrong, let, let me know. I apologize. But unfortunately, he passed away and I didn't get that time. So I'm telling you, know, y'all, if y'all going through gripes with people or it's a misunderstanding or miscommunication, try to mend that shit because life is short. So you never know uh, what's going to happen out here. So um, I never got to tell Slay. Uh, how much I cared about him, how much I loved him, how much I wanted to thank him, you know what I'm saying? And um, when I found out he was sick, I was praying for him, you know what I'm saying? Just getting out the month of Ramadan, you know what I'm saying? I salam alaikum to all the Muslims that was fasting, you know what I'm saying? And um, I thought Slay was going to pull through, and then I woke up one morning, and I got a text from a few people. They was like, I got a text from my my sis, and she was like, "Yo, Slay died." And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Yo, shit, crazy, b." And me and her wind up going to K Slay funeral, and you know, um, it was a little hassle at the door. They was on some COVID card shit, and I'm unvaccinated, so they was on some COVID card um, stuff, but. Due to the fact of who I am, you know what I'm saying, they had a, a non, you know, a restriction area in the Apollo Theater where you can sit at with your mask on and all that, you know what I'm saying? So, we at the top, but when I get, like, when we walk, when we park the car, when we walk, you expect for it to be a lot of, like, a, like pandemonium and you know, a bunch of paparazzi and press. It was really kind of clear. It was a few people outside taking pictures and stuff, but we walked in and, you know, they was just like starting a ceremony. And um, it was real touching. We, me and her sat in the, um, the balcony seats. Y'all call them the nosebleed seats. Heard McGruff, Stan Spit, shout out to them. They was sitting right behind me. 
and um, we watch a lot of heartfelt shit be told about the legacy of that man, LL Cool J, Melly Mel, Pat Pools, Remy, um, Buster, you know what I'm saying, General, his manager, you know what I'm saying, that shit was touching, you know what I'm saying, got a lot of awards, you know what I'm saying, got a lot of accolades, they played a 15 minute um, tribute film at the end of the service. They had some of his original art on stage and stuff like that. That was real dope. His coffin was on stage. You know what I'm saying? But well, one thing I noticed at the funeral service, and Rem said, Remy shot the Remy Ma. Or Remy said that it shit at his funeral service. She was like, I'm kind of mad right now. Because there's way too many empty seats in here for what Case Slade did for the culture. And I'm telling you, like, probably only the middle of the bottom of the, of the floor seats was with people. All on the sides was empty. You know, they had a few people on the sides and stuff, but it wasn't packed. And faces that you expect to be there, especially artists from Harlem, was not there. And I feel that is a real slap in the face to a nigga like Slay. Like, God damn, like, you not going to even get a man his respects and his roses. And I'm not taking no shots at anybody. It's just out of respect. There's a lot of people that's from New York and in New York that did not show up to that man's service and it was right in the heart of Harlem at the Apollo Theater. And this is not taking no shots or bringing no negative energy because you know I sell nothing but pies over here. But when my brother, God bless his soul, Nipsey died, the homie, that was, that was, that was, I, I remember, Nipsey was so real. I remember when I was in LA and I was on La Brea shop and I was crossing the street he made a U-turn on um, La Brea and stopped the trap for 15 minutes and spoke to me, bro. That was the realest shit ever. Shout out to Nipsey. But when Nipsey passed, I seen guys from New York, guys from Harlem, guys posted Nip, flying out to L.A. to where Nip got assassinated out to take pictures there. And this man, K. Slay, funeral was dead smacking the whole time in New York. And there's very few people that did come. Fat, shout out to Fat Joe, Buster, and like the guys that I said um, previously, a couple of minutes ago. Like, it was a great service. I just felt like, I felt what Rim said, it was way too many empty seats in there. And people, you know, not saying I don't know what people had going on that day, but if you didn't have anything going on that day and you was available and didn't go pay that man respects, and he definitely... Put you in the, put gave you an opportunity to shine. You should be ashamed of yourself, man. That's all I got to say about that. But shout out to K Slay, the Dropper King, Mister Smack, your favorite DJ. You will be missed, big homie. Until we meet again, episode 34, Unconstitute Hip Hop Story. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. I am back. I am fucking back. None of y'all can't fuck with me. I'm going to let y'all niggas know. I ain't got to be humble when, when it comes to competition. Because this is all this shit is. But this is pies. I'm selling pies over here. And shout out to everybody. Like I said, follow my man J Hood. Tells from the hood. Page is dope. I be smoking a lot of blunts watching that shit. But I told you, I'm back, boy. The king is back. I'm the slick Ricky, the ruler of this motherfucking storytelling shit over here on YouTube. But like I said, shout out to everybody. Ain't no hate for something that but piles. Follow my new Instagram page, The Real Uncasa. The underscore real underscore Uncasa. Um, follow Cranberry and Vodka. I'm still making a merch. And yo, I'm back. Like I said, man, I'm off hiatus. 
fresh off of Ramadan. Brand new content. I've been going a year, y'all. Y'all got fat when I start. It's my turn. It's my turn. Forget about it. Now, no bullshit. Like I said, rest in peace, smile. I mean, for sure, too. Rest in peace for my dude, EJ, man. Like I said, until next time, roll something, pop some, share something. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, get a lighter. And this is Unconscious True Hip Hop Stories, episode 34. A tribute to K Slate. I love you, big homie. Nothing but love. Nothing, 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 nothing but love. Shout out to my man Key. I learned how to hustle from my man Key. Go follow his his platform, Keys to the City Podcast. The Hustle Man. I love y'all. Till next time. I'm back, man. Don't worry about nothing. I'ma hold this down. I'ma hold this down for all the fans that I see in the streets. I love y'all. I'm selling pies. Positive internet energies have been a lot of negative energy and won't put a lot of shit in perspective. And I know y'all want to hear my take on that dip set versus the lots. That's next episode. Don't worry about that. I got y'all. I love y'all. Till next time. Positive internet energy. I'm fucking back fresh off our ease. I'm not playing no games. The slick rigger, the storytelling shit of YouTube. Y'all niggas know what it is. Mr. UK himself. Untouchable King. United Kings kill all stereotypes in America. You know what I'm saying? I'm back. I got fat wild stuff. It's my time. One hundred.